I'm going to go over how I set up a uh, beaver skin for headbands. Uh, usually what I do first is I damage out and nail out my beaver skin, which I did on this one up at the top. He had a really bad hole, so I didn't even patch that. But um, I use a template, and my template is 23 and a half inches long, and it's three and a half inches wide. I set that on my beaver skin and get a good idea where I want it to go and mark it out with a pen. Now, hair on a beaver, this is the head and the hair is running towards the tail, so that's the way I want my headband to go. If you had a smaller skin, you might need to make your headband in two pieces. So what you do is then you would have to have a seam. So it would be like maybe the first piece would be halfway down. And then the second piece would be the same area going across half down. However you join it, then your seam would be in the center front. Um, but we've got our headbands cut out. I was able to get... Uh, another, I used another skin and I was able to get um, six headbands cut. So I've got six headbands cut. They're taped with cold tape on the edges all around. And these are the measurement of my pattern. 23 and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. I'm also going to mark where I have this hash mark right here. I'm also gonna mark um, those marks before I go to sew. The next thing I do is I cut my lining. So what I like to use for lining on my headbands is, it's a fabric that I get at Joanne Fabrics. It's a, it's called a velvet. It's in the upholstery section. It has a like a bonded nylon um, backing. And it works, it feels really nice. It's not stiff. And you can get it in brown and black and other colors, but I usually just use black. Then what I do is I cut a template for my lining. And my template for my lining is two and a half inches wide. And I cut my lining the same width as my headband template. So it's, it's, I use the same template for my headband, that template to cut my lining, but I leave extra on the ends so uh, I can fold that in. But what I do before I sew is I take, I've got another template that's two and a half inches wide, and I like to turn back the selvage. So I don't even have to measure it. I fold it steam it along this one edge then I come back to the top and I can feel that cardboard right there at the edge so I know it's taunt I fold this back and then I steam along the top so I do that the whole length of the fabric and it works really quite well so I've got these uh, these other ones already completed and next we're going to be um, assembling the headbands. Getting ready to assemble these and I want to show you I also put a layer of this poly batting in between the lining and the fur so I cut that the same dimensions um, as my lining so it's two and a half inches wide and the length of the headband, you know, I don't get real worried about this. I end up cutting it a little bit off at the ends anyway. So just want to make sure it's at least as long as your headband. And I like pre-cut a lot of this stuff and do a lot of this stuff ahead of time if I know I've got a big batch of stuff I'm going to be working on. But the next thing I want to show you is I've got all my hash marks on my um, leather of my fur piece and the back side of my velvet piece. The velvet has a nap just like the hair of the beaver. 
So the nap on the velvet is going to go down. I've got that marked with the down mark. And the, vel the beaver is going hair down. So I've got that matching. So that finish is going the same direction on both pieces. Then what I like to do is I like to mark the bottom end. That's where my Velcro goes. So I take a piece of velvet Velcro, excuse me, and I usually cut a three inch piece. I sew that to the face side of my velvet by regular sewing machine all the way around. And um, there's my line that would be like the end of my headband. I kind of keep it about a quarter of an inch away from that. And what we're going to do next is we're going to sew the velvet to the fur. So I start at the top at this Velcro end. And um, occasionally what I'll do is I might make a tack mark here and a couple of tack marks down on the side to make sure that my um, headband isn't twisting or my velvet isn't twisting. And... Uh, then we sew the other side. So we'll get on to that. After you have your first side um, put together with the velvet, then you can come back to your second side. And you just want to make sure that when you're joining this, that it doesn't twist. Um, you can either tack it or you can use a clip. But tuck your hair down and you're you know you just join it up if you're doing sewing this by hand it's basically the same method you want to cut catch the salvage of your um, that fold of your velvet with your fur and you just do that all the way to the end I've got this joined up now so my velvet is attached to my beaver on both sides going the long way and um, next what I like to do is just make sure, and I run my finger over this edge, that I've got no skips because I don't want to have any, you know, little high or low spots when I turn this that I have to come back and re-catch. That's not good. Um, you can run your knife over the edge so it flattens that a little bit, and that's another, um, the back side of your knife, so you get a nice, um, so you don't have as much of a ridge on your seam. The other thing I like to um, do is I like to remove my cold tape from that long edge. And I do that the whole length um, once I know that it's sewed on and it's not twisted at all. So this looks good. It hangs, if you were going to hold it up, it hangs true. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't twist right or left. It's good. After we get the length done, then we're going to come and we're going to close the end that had the Velcro. So I turn that over, center it, and um, tuck my hair in and seam that end. So I'll show you how that looks when I get that done. So I sewed the center to the right. And then I'm going, I flipped it around and I'm going to go from the center to the opposite end on the end of the headband. And I've got that, the hair tucked in real well. And you can see the one end with the uh, fur is a little longer. And it's supposed to be. It wraps just a little bit around the edge. So that's why you start at the center and you sew to the end. And likewise, otherwise... You're going to get probably one end too much on one side and not enough on the other. So we'll just close this up and then we're going to put our batting in. When I put my batting in, what I do is I loosen my tension um, at least like two winds and I lengthen my stitch a little bit longer and then I just make a couple of tacks and just the edge of the batting um, like three tacks on each side, and then I start at the um, end where the Velcro is, and I just stitch that up at the end of going across, and then I make three tacks on each side um, going down, and then after I've got my tacks done, 
what I do is I take my finger and I run it over that to make sure that it doesn't pucker at all. And once I know that it's not puckering, I know it won't show through on the first side. So um, now we're going to turn it. So what I do is I take, I like, I've used a lot of things, but I kind of like either a wood ruler because it has a, doesn't have a sharp end or I can't find my paint, paint stick. I usually use a paint stick and I'm going to start by turning the Velcro end inside out and um, then we'll come down and I'll show you how we finish the end with the, the open end. So before we turn our headband, I am going to close the other end just at the corners. So I'm only going to do like about a half an inch to the end on both sides. And then what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll turn it. So I'm going to close both these ends and then we're going to turn it. So you can see how much I closed on um, the end we're going to turn everything through. Now what I like to use to turn this is, um, I like to use a paint stick. It's got a flat end, and I used to have like one for a five gallon barrel that was longer than this one. But um, I start, obviously, at the closed end, and I push that piece with the um, Velcro down in, and that gets it started, and then I just slide my uh, ruler in, or my paint stick, and turn it up on end, and gently slide the whole thing through to the opposite end. I'll show you what it looks like when it's turned. All right, I've got it turned, and the next thing I'm going to do is attach the other end of the Velcro to the open end that we just turned our headband through. So, first side up, and hook side up. The hook side gets attached to this opening on the end and we'll put that in here to oops, sorry to our fur machine and I'm gonna sew this up to that point right there and then likewise on the other end so I'll show you what that looks like when I get it done So that piece of Velcro, the hook side, is sewn to the fur, and that's the seam there. And now what I'm going to do is bring this velvet lining up over and stitch this. You can either stitch it by hand, or I'm going to stitch it by fur machine. And I'm going to stitch it by fur machine from this point to this point right on top of the seam that I did with the um, Velcro. So if you're not comfortable with that, just stitch it by hand. So this is what it looks like after I stitch that by uh, fur machine. And then I'll run my um, knife over that to uh, flatten that seam out a little bit. And my Velcro is done. And what I like to do also is I like to round the end of that um, extension tab that comes out. So I just cut the corner off a little bit. I did this end and I need to do that end. And now we're going to press our headband so it lays real nice. Here's my headband after I have it all turned and I patted it out flat on the first side. Then I also did the same thing on the velvet side and it looks good. We're going to press it, and what I use is a steam iron and a piece of lining. I just take the lining on top of the back side, the velvet side, and I'm just going to give it a shot of steam, move it down, press it, give it a shot of steam, move it down, press it, give it a shot of steam, and it really helps make that fur lay nice and flat. If you need to, after it's cooled and you want to, you can come back and make a tack, you know, 
through the velvet to the edge, but I don't think you'll need to. So basically our, our headband is finished and the Velcro on this end attaches to the tab on that's underneath. So when it's secured, it has a nice look to it. The fur runs around, not up and down. So it's got a nice shine to this. So basically, when you're doing a headband, you're thinking, okay, industry standard is three inches wide by 23 and a half inches long. And to get that, what we did was we cut our fur three and a half inches wide. We cut our lining two and a half inches wide. That equals six. On the half, if you divide that by two, you get three inches. So our lining is just a little narrower and our fur wraps around the edge just about a quarter of an inch so that you get a nice three inch wide headband. Thank you for watching. If you like our my videos, like and share, and thanks again.